Okay, guys, I'm here with Tom yep. from Ray Marine. Ray nice Marine to meet you. Yep. From FLIR. Yep. Okay, Tom, uh, tell us about FLIR and how that relates to safety and technology with boating. We see these thermal images, they look really cool. Tell us about what that is. Sure, so thermal imaging is, is, is making a video image uh, with infrared radiation. Everything radiates infrared at some level, even ice. So being able to see when there's no lighting conditions at all and completely pitch dark, this, this camera, what you're seeing here, if the lights are off in, this, in the convention center right now, it would look exactly the same. Wow. So the benefit of it is on the water, being able to see things that are in the water that other sensors aren't necessarily gonna pick up, like radar. Um, anything that's on the water that's, you know, that you, you potentially do damage to the boat sure. or to you, if you hit it, uh, you should, you'll be able to see it. So this is almost like night vision then? It is, yep. It's, that's the primary benefit, although for the recreational boater, is to see at night. Mm -hmm. But there's utility in using it during the day as well. Uh, for one, it's not affected, unlike other image, intensif you know, in image intensifying technologies that are out there, like starlight scopes and whatever, where they are taking ambient light and amplifying it in right. the image. Um, this isn't seeing that at all. So at, during the day, when there's a lot of glint and glare on the water, yeah. you know, when you're out on the water and you're trying to see navigation aids or maybe lobster pots and those kinds of things that could do damage to your vessel if you hit them, um, you'll be able to see those because it doesn't see that glare. That glare is the visible light. So, so in a pilot house in the middle of the day when the sun's just that's right. whited out, you can't see anything, you yeah. look at this screen, we'll be able to see That's that's, that's exactly right. Cool. Now, it won't pick up the markers or anything, right? It has to have heat to pick it up? Is no, that it'll right? pick them up. Really? Sure, because they're absorbing infrared. So during the day when the sun is beaming down, that's a big source of infrared radiation, right? Okay. Everything absorbs infrared at some level okay. and then emits it. So people think, well, if I'm not going to see a log in the water because a log is going to at some point be the exact same temperature as the water. It never is. Really? Because the water has very poor, we call it emissivity, the way it absorbs and transmits infrared. It's very poor in that sense, whereas a log or any material, anything that's in the water, even uh, a weed line or a board or a navigation aid, whether it's a, an aluminum or you know, metal navigation aid or whether it's uh, you know um, some other material, a big log, a wood, like mean, a piling. Pile, wood's very good at absorbing infrared, so it, it therefore emits it very nicely, and an infrared camera is going to pick that up. That's super so, cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. see, I, that's the kind of the stuff I, I say. You know, a lot of this stuff I feel like I know. But I didn't even know that. I thought it was only going to be humans or animals or things like that that no. put off heat. So you're telling me things no. that absorb heat. They're absorbing navigational all, aids that's even right. during the day. That's huge. That's right. And they're emitting it during the, you know at night at to some level. Okay. So you're, you're, there's always going to be a contrast difference between. I mean, you see even like marks on the carpet. Um, you know, a very small differences in temperature. Uh, the camera's going to see it, right? So I often use a use the example of a, if I take a brochure, for instance, and if, I, if you want to shine it on that, I'll try to get in the mercy setting. He's over here. So I got to go this way. So I'm holding the brochure. Oh, wow, it's black. It's black. You don't see it because that's visible light, right? The color and all that stuff. But if I just put my hand on it just for a second, think of this as the sun on a board at night, right? Right. Or dur during the day. Well, at night, that oh, infrared wow. now is all the way through the, if, if I flip through the pages, you see that transfer of of um, of infrared. That's super cool. Is getting all the way through it, so it's you know the absorption level happens very quickly, and therefore it emits it differently. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to see things that you would think well they're gonna be the same temperature. It never is. That's never super certainly cool. not in the water. Now as soon as something's uh, this far underwater, I mean literally it disappears. Right. Because infrared radiation does not transmit through uh, through water. It's okay. you know so that's you know that's one of the limitations to it. So tell us this, um, we see the magic, what, how do we get the magic? What is, I mean, I see these things up here, these are yep. obviously the pickups for it, right? So tell That's me right. how it gets from there to here. So it's a video stream, okay. right? It's in, we, all of our cameras, are, you know, at least our newer cameras now, have a digital you know, IP video stream. They have an analog, you know, old school analog uh, video stream, and they have a um, HDSDI, a high, a high definition for the video, uh, for the video of the, 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 some of our cameras aren't just thermal, they're low light uh, CMOS cameras. So they'll see in really low light conditions, but it's still a visible camera. Okay. So those are provided in high definition. So th those are the three means of getting it down to a display. All of the major manufacturers yep. um, for multifunction displays, you see we have obviously Raymarine, they're, they're part of our company. Sure. Um, but we have Furuno and, and, and Simrad, and I have Garmin on display here. That's to show off the, um, that, that we've worked with them 
to, to provide the controls in their MFDs. All of their, all of, any monitor will be able to take the thermal image and we have joysticks that you can control so it. So you can actually control where control you're looking it, with it Control it, but you know, the other manufacturers have put the oh, control, wow. you know, we've given them the software to go, you know, to develop. To do a PTZ the, the kit, type yeah, deal. To, to integrate the controls of the, of the joystick into their, uh, in, into their MFDs. So let me ask you this, can we take a, just a general display unit and one of your joysticks and the-, the 100%, the, and then and We can run it just like that. That's right. Wow, you can. so you, you don't you, have to buy all of these fancy displays to have FLIR. That's right. Matter of fact, most a lot of our commercial operators that don't have these guys, they may have just an off-the-shelf, you know, yeah, they a want pilot a big house. <laughs> they have a big, you know, an off-the-shelf monitor uh, in the, you know, in the pilot house. They'll, that's where they'll use it. The only thing that I always tell people is the, 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 the brightness of the display, right. you know, displays, whether they're sunlight readable, even in a closed bridge, sure. you know, like it's in I there, do. reflects off of, off of those monitors. So yeah. we always recommend, a, you know, a maritime focused uh, marine uh, monitor yeah. uh, that that will have those those video inputs. And can you and split it to have two different ones? You so, sure can. So if you had one yeah. on your regular display, yep. you can also cast it to a different one. You do. Yep. Yep. There's there's you know mul you can bring both feeds in. Right now we have this is the um, the thermal feed, and the the M364C. We've got both. I have a simulator that's going on right now, so it's uh, on our on our sounder. Okay. So there's a little bit of a delay, um, but this is now this is what's called CMOS technology. This okay. is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor that's in there that allows for the amplification of light uh, in that display. So even in really low light conditions, um, you will see better with that camera than you'll see with your naked eye. Nice. And some, in matter of fact, there's a wherever that, this one here. So you can see when you're in the intercoastal waterways, for instance, uh, when it's dark in that pilot house, you'll, yeah. dark like this, yeah. you'll see like that. Really? With that, with that camera. Because it's picking up all of the light. So it's basically overexposing the image, is that what it's? That's, that's right, it's, it's just amplifying it. So when you're offshore and there is some luminescence, that's a nice bright moon that, you know, you may not need thermal. You can just use the, the CMOS, you know, low light, uh, camera as well and we've integrated so what we've done that nobody really el uh, else does is if I go down here so I'm gonna go back to thermal here back to feed I'll go to thermal we, we have a, a we can blend the two images together because one of the things about thermal that you you, you don't doesn't see visible light so reading registration numbers on a vessel we sell a lot to first responders right and there's a requirement there to be able to read a registration on a vessel that's offshore for instance well, with a thermal camera, if I bring this back over here, yeah. I shine it down on me again, if you can stand it. <laughs> uh, if I hold this, where am I here? So if I hold the brochure up, you don't see the color. Correct. You don't see that it says FLIR, you don't see the picture of anything. Just a black box. Just a black, right? And if I switch over to the color camera, obviously you see it perfectly, right? Correct. It's a high definition one. So now if I go to blending mode, and what we have, we have this color thermal vision. I can, I can adjust the saturation of that. So now I have, when I get out of there, and I go back to my spot, and there's a little bit of a parallax issue because we're, sure. you know, there's two lenses, yeah, we're so we're in close, and you can adjust that, but you see a little bit better, and I can, with the, the color, so a navigation beacon on another vessel, for instance, you want to yeah. see if it's green or red, you're not going to see that thermally, but right. when you have the color thermal vision on, you'll see that light very bright. Super cool. You know, and then what's even better here, if I go back to, I'm sorry, I want to go blending level, blending mode. We have one that's called multispectral. This one is taking the outside visible image um, and it's, now I can read the FLIR on here. Wow. Uh, so it's outlining the basic. It's outlining it. So you see out across from us, I can actually read now the, the booth across or see the lettering, um, whereas you couldn't see that thermally before. So something that's in the water that even is thermally camouflaged, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just cooler. Under. Yeah, you're now going to see the visible image around that. So search and rescue is a, is a that's a real uh, capability, real good capability. If somebody's in the water, obviously, Best case scenario is their shoulders and head are above the water. 
that's going to stand out. It's going to stand out. It's going to really help. So that's a, that's a feature that we that we put in there that's quite useful for first responders, and for the public. You know, for recreational boaters as a safety tool. If somebody falls overboard. Oh, I see this fitting able, in all of our categories: yeah, technology, exactly. safety, everything. We also have handhelds. This same technology that we have in there. Um, you know, obviously for our our, our customers that are Smaller in northern boats, northern yeah. climb. Yeah, they, they they're putting their boats up in the winter. And you know they're like, well, I don't want because I I don't know if I want to spend the money to put a FLIR camera on. I only use it three months. I'm up in New Hampshire. You know, it's sure. if we get four months, you know, in the year on my boat, year that's a good year, right? So having a camera that you can take off the boat, or if you're a uh, um, early morning delivery, fishing, delivery captain or a professional operator that's on different boats um, and just want it in their go bag, you know, it's the same technology. And it's 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 actually it's a it's a new camera that we just introduced. That's super that cool. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a it's a fun. It's a. So tell us this. Um, I really appreciate all this information. Yeah. So this can be installed, obviously retrofitted, no big deal, because you're just it's just a power yeah. supply and you're wiring to it, right? That's right. Yeah, 12, 24 volts. It's auto sensing. And I assume um, they can find these. Our customers could find these anywhere, right? Yeah. Well, any the marine, marine electronic. Exactly. Any um, marine. Now, one thing I will say too, with the recreational boaters in particular is a FLIR camera is not a one size fits all. Okay. We have cameras that are small like this, that's, you know, that is what we call it an M232. That's kind of our entry level camera. Um, and everybody, you know, sometimes resonates to like, I want that because I got a small boat or that's, that's all I need. I don't need anything big like this. These are gyro stabilized, you know, they got pan and tilt. We have little fixed mounted cameras. The thing I always tell people is, it really is the, what your expectation is. If you want to go offshore, where you're in lumpy water, you know, on a regular basis, you're an offshore fisherman that goes out at three o'clock in the morning yep. and you're hitting seas the three to five, you're going to want something gyro stabilized because yep. otherwise the camera's moving as you move. Sure. Um, you're going to want something with a faster frame rate. We have cameras that are 30 hertz versus the smaller cameras, which are nine hertz, which means the refresh rate. Yep. The, the smaller cameras are really for that, that operator that's out on a lake or out on a, you know, intercoastal that goes out. It's just wants it for those few times they're Additional out at night. Additional yeah. The few times they're out at night when they just want to be able to turn it on as an, an emer at headway speed, yeah. not up on plane. Right. You know, the faster frame rate cameras up on plane. Uh, and then we have bigger, much bigger cameras we don't have here that when you really want to be able to see out to the horizon thermally, we've got cameras that will do that as well. And you so. keep saying nighttime, but um, our fog is still going to work the same, right? So fog's a problem, right? Just is because it? the way you can't see into the water. Okay. Uh, or it's, you know, with the thermal it camera. It that. If you think of fog for what it is, right? It's water molecules suspended sure. in the water, in the air column. And, and you're, these are sensors, right? These are sensing radiation that's coming back from something to the camera. The more that water vapor is stacked up in between, like I'm up in the Northeast, and, and it's it's pea soup Thick. stuff. Sure. It'll see better than the naked eye, but they're not fog cameras. Gotcha. That's why we say don't ever get rid of radar. Radar okay. is number one for fog. Okay. And uh, thermal camera augments it nicely because a lot of times if you you'll, you'll be able to see a little bit better. We've, sure. And it really depends on where in the U.S. you are too. Out in the West Coast in California, it's a different you know the, the molecules a little smaller yeah. typically. And people yeah. will say, why don't you? Why don't you advertise these as, you know, we can see great through fog out in Alpha California. Well, it's good to set the expectation right, yeah, too. Yeah, and I, I always say it's a, really set the expectation. You, you know, if it if it helps you, that's great, but we don't advertise them as fog That's cameras. good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, man. It's great, yeah. great, great job. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching our IBEX content. Hey, if you or someone you know hasn't already been approached by SafeWake that does boating safety and technology, please drop us a line below at SafeWake. We are committed to bringing the latest and greatest boating safety and technology to our audience. Thanks, guys.